here in the upper bracket. And already we jump on in. Guys, once again, we wave goodbye to Solo's Magi. I'm sorry, Samael, you don't get to, get, don't get to see it this time. I mean, it's just too good. <laughs> too good, obviously. <laughs> too good. Actually, it's looking rather familiar. Oh, All right, I, I like that one. I remember before TF5, we used to like scrim these Russian teams, and the only time we lost to them, and they had Disruptor, because we actually had no idea what spirit to do breaker. with that. It's a uh, yeah, Spirit Breaker and Disruptor, and they just run at you, and it's actually insane. It's super hard to play. So you're just kind of panicking as it runs. I mean, yeah, we lost so many games to that. Then at one point, we just started banning it, and we never lost a game to them again. Oh, okay, inside info. That Disruptor has got some male quaking in his boots. FNG, you, uh, you asked for it. You said, you're talking comfort. This was uh, one of the heroes at the tip of your tongue. The thing is, Disruptor is really good a catch hero, and they can just pick right now. And Chen, they don't, uh, will, they will not like play around map. They just gonna push the towers, mm. get team fights and stuff. And they can just pick a good hero like Sven, Nike, Morphling, whatever they want to Ramses to win the game or to no one to win the game. Basically, they right now can do whatever they want. They have freedom, sanking as well. As it looks like things are changing, nature's profit now. Uh, Blitz, I was actually asking quite a few people in the green room a little earlier on in the tournament. I couldn't quite understand Nature's Prophet's role uh, in the kind of the current meta game, what he was up to. How would you explain it to perhaps newer viewers what Nature's Prophet's going to be providing? I mean, the biggest thing is the fact that no matter what happens, you're always going to give your team uh, the statistical edge because you can just teleport in. A three on three fight suddenly turns into a four on three. Anytime you go for a mid gank, if it doesn't immediately succeed, you can TP in with that Nature's Prophet. And the biggest thing is because you can always shove in lanes, you can create pressure on the other side of the map. For example, with Nature's Prophet, you TP to the opposite side of the map where you think action will happen. You shove in that lane, and regardless of how that fight goes, you've already got a lane shoved in. They've got to immediately deal with it at all times. This is a hero that just has presence on the map all the time. And I think the reason they pick it here is because they're Disruptor on yep. the other side. And Disruptor, what it's really known for FNG is it's such a garbage laner. Yeah, indeed. And garbage. It's like you can stay two on one, like three on one, but you can't stay against two on two, especially against Furan, because he just rushed Trins into you and you're done. Just having a quick look at how those bands go. I can't quite see them from a distance. It looks like it's going to be another Death Prophet taken away, as well as Dazza. Looks like kind of VP have got a pretty s firm idea of what they want to be taking away. You know, this is the same from them, simply the draft changing what the heroes will be picked. And so this is where I kind of start asking. Why? Why is it that we're seeing this? Sanking is probably the one of the most picked heroes we've seen at TI7. Is it just because it, it's a Burrow Strike? I think it, uh, the hero just provides too much. Like overall, like he's a strong laner if you put him with a certain hero in the lane. And he's a multi-role hero again. And uh, then when he's off the map, he has like he has insta stun, which is like really good dispatch. Because if you want to smoke and you see something, you want to insta stun him. And you want to you get the kill and you want to get out. Cause and also, he's a huge team fight, and then he's lane shoved too. Like, he can just shove the lanes in and just blank out and TP, and like, he's really hard to catch. So, I think that hero just has everything on paper, but yeah. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Complicated. And he can farm jungle as well when he's off the map. Yeah. Does it all. Does absolutely everything you desire. That's why I was a little surprised that LFY favors Earth Spirit so much, just because in the groups, this hero felt super underwhelming. I don't know what your experience was playing with and against it, but. It feels like it's a little bit more mediocre in that regard. Like, it's okay at everything. It's got a silence and a stun, but it's not really instant. I think it's more about what the player's feeling like. And I uh, think with Earthspirit is, like, he doesn't really need a blink to, like, uh, pull these ganks off. Sand King, however, like, relies on blink a lot. And if somehow he has a bad game, like, that's his downside. If he has a bad game, he, like, his blink gets delayed and your team's relying on your blink a lot, that's when the game gets really hard. That's what happened to us yesterday. People were having a lot of, yeah, people were very surprised to see Earth Spirit's kind of success rate dropping dramatically here at TI. It has not been particularly successful here. Of course, stats don't necessarily mean everything. We all know that. And a Necro has been drafted. FNG seeing a Necro join the ranks of Sanking and Disruptor. Yeah, the thing is, Necro is a good laner against Furan. He just can stay. If you get him a little bit of help at the start of the game, he'll just stay here alone and get a lot of farm. I think it's kind of rough lane for Necro, to be honest, versus Furion. Yeah, I mean, it's a start, because Furion can deny a lot of creeps, but later he's fine. So, I mean, you're just talking about early game. We just, we've already highlighted early game is priority. Yeah. Let's have a look. AA comes back into the fray. Oh, I'm a poet, and I didn't know it. I mean, AA is just such a strong hero, especially right now. I was thinking to myself, like, what's the, what's the hero that feels like it has a lot of impact that a lot of people didn't pick coming into this tournament? But if you think it just... A lot of the different heroes that we've been seeing that are just hard to kill, the Bristlebacks, the Necros of this, uh, of this patch, A just deals with them so well. 
Yep, but Nicolette can be bait. It's like uh, Pasha can play it, go off lane, and they just can pick Sven or something. Maybe no one's gonna meet on Necrolite. I, I like that I can pick a lot. I think it's a really good against all three heroes LFI has, because he's a laner who can sustain against like this damage and stuff. Like even if they pressure him, like his E is pretty good against those like those dual lanes aggressive, and he can just like sit there and still be like effective with his howl. So I think that was a really good pick there. Yeah. Something too is it's a Roshan hero, and I noticed that VP especially they always want one vehicle to be able to Roshan so that they can play around this like. 15, 20 minute timing in the mid game and just get really aggressive on the map. Yeah, VP doesn't like to like to take early towers. Like they are the only team who didn't take any towers before 10 minutes. It's like really surprising, but still. Wait, that stat still stands. Yep. Whoa. And about what Blitz said, they like to get early Russian, but you need a medallion for that for sure. And I don't think that Disruptor either or Senkin gonna get it. So that's the problem. Looks like Void's gonna be on the different side this time. Yep, they need to lock down for Lycan because he's just gonna rush you at a six, six round in a movement speed. Mm. And you have to get something for that. I think VP can use a Puck ban here. Looks Puck. super good for LFI, I think. Like, the hero who can jump uh, Necro and burst him, like help him burst him, he has a silence and with the A, I think he can do it. And also he's like fast-paced hero with Furion and AA, so he can do a lot of stuff on the map. I think it's one of the better super. I mean, the hero is just broken, to be honest, and I don't even know how he made it, like to the last phase. But I think if LFI gets puck, this game is pretty solid for them. So this is the basically what you're telling me is if you see this draft for your team, you're you're asking for puck. Yeah, I am. I mean, we probably had they probably banned it first phase. Yeah. yeah. The banned brute, LFI. I believe LFI played with Furion and puck against uh, TNC. And it was a solid game for Inflame and Super. They After they lost in fight at the bottom, they just uh, script skipped and a lot TNC couldn't finish the game. So basically, that's a good strategy, as Samuel said. I am seriously nerding out right now. Like, I think people would pay a good dollar for this lesson in Dota. I'm just sitting here and letting three Dota brains talk about this draft. And that's Pugna. And that is Pugna. So Surprisingly successful in the group stage. Yeah, it was. It started six and zero, but then it started to cool down a little bit. But yeah. the big thing here is, I mean, you have Pugna, but they have de they definitely have enough ways to deal with the ward, especially if the Lycan just runs at them. If they get a BKB, it really feels like Virtus Pro is going to have a pretty easy time here. I, yeah, I don't think Pugna was a good pick there because uh, that hero is really like exploitable. Like he can be ran over real easily, and I I don't think LFI has anything to like secure him from that happening. Like that stuff can happen very easily. Like. All they need is Sand King and some strong mid laner. Maybe Potom can work here. Or anything, basically. Like Pugna is a really squishy area. So, so just can you expand upon that a little bit? Why is Pugna so open, like vulnerable to being exploited? I don't know. He doesn't really have escape. And, so uh, he's just going to be kind of yeah. standing still. Caught yeah. It's, just, it's I've not been, Puck. <laughs> I, I've been there one too many times, and it's not a good feeling. No. No. That mobility, not necessarily a strong suit. And so VP are given the last chance. The five man though is really strong from LFI. It's going to be really hard to take those fights, especially if they lead in with Chrono. I mean, LFI just puts them on the timer themselves, just to rush something and try to win early or maybe mid game with that Pagna pick. I don't think their late game is that bad, to be honest. It just depends how lanes go. Like whoever wins the lane this game, like, is probably going to win the game because it's really hard for the team to make a comeback. Yeah. And a big Viper. Necrolite offline. Viper, Viper? Viper coming in from no one. I mean, you were correct. You said that uh, there's a very good chance that this Necro, it's pretty open, that it could go for this offlane. Mm. This, this is going to be exciting, boys. A third could be on the cards. Virtus Pro are the ones that have complete control of this one. And I can hear the crowd already anxious in anticipation. The draft is done. We know how this one's going down. And to guide you through the action, the voice that will be filling this very arena in just a moment's time is Toby Wan. Center. It is an interesting position to be in. LFY going for a similar draft to Virtus Pro, looking for that early lane advantage into pressure push. Virtus Pro, however, look like they have a lot better rounded lineup this time around in game two. I don't know, man. You're on, you're on the other side of the fence in this? I'm looking at this draft and I just see this AA being an absolutely outstanding pick. I think, uh, first of all, when you pick Necrophos, this is one of the counter picks that you try to get rid of when you want to go for Necrophos. And then in addition to that, they pick Lycan afterwards, which is like a 
a two-sided matchup in the sense that Lycan is very good at running it in and killing it, but at the same time, a big part of Lycan is the Howl, and you can't use it if the target is being hit by Ice Blast. So I think Ice Blast has a really high impact in this game, and you know what? They got a Chrono to set it up. So they can guarantee these Ice Blasts to land. I think this, this game, more so than the first one, is going to be really, really fast, and it's going to be very indicative. Like, the first 15 minutes, if Virtus Pro lose the first 15 minutes, like Samael said, if their lanes don't go well, I think this game can fall apart. LFY can look at really quick barracks with their lineup. And on the, on the other side, you look at Virtus Pro, who have both the Lycan Wolves and the Viper and the Necrophos to try to push down towers. So both teams really have the, the lineups that can, can knock down the towers in this game. Maybe this will be the first time VP get one sub 10. I could definitely see it happen, at least. Yeah, it could. Either that, they just focus primarily on their lanes. It's interesting to also watch the fact that VP, even with the early Necro pickup, you talked about the Ancient Apparition being fantastic against most of the VP lineup. Necro can just turn into being this great controller to work with Lil to make it a very cool, very difficult offlane of Virtus Pro to deal with once more. We've seen this before. Then no one with a Viper in mid. Difficult oh, to kill off. Are they actually... Okay, GG. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Solo takes first it's blood. Over. There you go. This sap all over over the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, I want to talk a little more Pugna, though. Um, let's, let's do it, man. This is a hero that I think it's not a coincidence that it had the high win rate that it did. It has received a lot of buffs. And oh, um, Monet, you're oh. going to do this? They've gone for the chilling touch. The bonus damage is there. Lil's holding his Barra Strike, gets both of them, and the Bounty Rune as well. LFY, however, were contesting the bottom, so they got a Bounty Rune of their own into the hands of Nature's Prophet. And back to your thoughts on the Pugna. Yeah, so it's definitely true that Pugna's uh, elusiveness is pretty low, it's, but it, the hero has received a lot of buffs. It's 335 base movement speed, the spells have been improved a lot, especially the Crepify now is now an incredible spell, and it used to be pretty bad, to be honest. Um, and it, for the playstyle of Philip I think this is a great pick in this game, because they want to use this Nature's Prophet to split push, and at the same time also just uh, connect on these towers and take a fast fight. And the Nether Ward against a hero like Necrophos and the Disruptor, for example, have really high mana costs on their spells. Um, if anything, this to me is a good Pugna game. And I'm, I'm going to be curious to see if, if Virtus Pro can find the tools to lock him down. Well, for the moment, they're going to let Pugna just have the lane. And it's up to no one in Super to battle it out there. But the other lanes to look at is down the bottom lane, Ramses, who's going to go for the Lycan first, put up a Feral Impulse, working with Solo on one of his signature heroes, that Disruptor, a very very difficult hero to escape from, and especially if you're Nature's Prophet, that glimpse is going to cause him all sorts of problems to come in the fight or out. Uh, Fu wants to come into it, initiating into Solo, coming around the back of Ramses, but the Howl turns on, a little extra peek, and the harassment will continue from all sides. These uh, offlane dual lanes with Nature's Prophet have been uh, very popular and successful. We've seen uh, LFY have success with it. I think we've seen even teams that were have been knocked out of the tournament. I think Evil Genius is one of the things that they did very well in their games, was using these Nature's Prophet offlane dual lanes to get a great advantage early on. Um, it is a very strong laning hero, and when combined with the correct rotating support, can put a lot of pressure on that safe lane. And we're seeing that VP can't necessarily get too many pulls off because of this nature's, or rather this uh, with spirit movement. But so far, so good for them. The mid lane is going fine, the safe lane is going fine, and Pasha has managed to pull the creep wave all the way in between his tier one and tier two. Oh, uh, Fu, you really didn't want a part of that. Solo doesn't have the glimpse. Nature's Prophet was TPing over with a double damage rune. Ah, Fu dropping low. Solo, he's going after this. He doesn't have boots. He doesn't have movement speed. So Ah, Fu turns around Solo with the Observer Ward. Gets the vision around the tree line. He'll take the kill. He'll reveal the fact the Observer Ward is down, but the bonus gold will make that worthwhile. Afu very quickly getting over and getting his bounty. Lil now his into the mid, Barra Strikes available, no one's already there. Super's in trouble, he doesn't have his support. His support is currently de-warding with a creep wave. Solo will move in, still with the double damage rune. They make sure no one gets the last hit. Lil having to bail out after taking too much damage from the tower. But Votus Pro, again, a good start with the kill count. But LFY still have a lot to work with as well. That was a very good sequence from VP, getting that kill and then Earth Spirit running over for that bounty rune on the right side opened up for the rotation in toward mid. So they're playing very fast. This is what I was hoping for VP that they would do in the first game as well. Like, look for these picks early on with their support rotations. And both Solo and Lil have been successful. And the CS now looking very great for VP as well. This is a very big lead for them actually at this point. Getting great farm in all three lanes. Yeah, not only the two kills, they're sitting about 1,700 net worth in front 
of LFY. This top lane has been working well for Pasha, not really harassed out of the lane by DDC or Monet. In fact, while that fight was happening on bottom and then rotating in towards mid, Monet was doing a lot of chip damage. Uh, I mean, uh, Pasha was doing a lot of chip damage into both Monet as well as DDC. So he's getting more out of the lane as well. But it's the fact that Viper is getting so much farm. Oh, There's something about it, the kick into Solo. Rams is nearby, the Glimpse just trying to drag back. The Nature's Prophet out of range, but the damage is done and Solo will fall. Uh, this is the strongest hero on LFY's side right now, this Nature's Prophet. They will want to activate him as much as possible, give him a kill or two in lane so that he can get a fast level 6 and TP around and look for, for this pressure. They do, have a, they do have a little bit of lack of stuns, I would say, LFY, to activate this Fury on too easily early I on. I would check out top lane right now, Monet having to time walk himself away. Lil was trying to move in with the boots just to attack. Pasha actually ended up in a two-on-one fight and has forced both the Ancient Apparition as well as the Faceless Void off the lane for a short period of time. I think LFY wants to try to do something in mid here with the Earth Spirit and Nature's Prophet TP Bone. Solo oh. cuts him off. Body blocks him up, means he doesn't have the glimpse. It's still on cooldown for 13 seconds, but body block all the way through. When Viper rotates over, he doesn't have the movement speed to escape. And no one will claim his second kill of this second game. Solo is really in the right place at the right time so far in this game. That was a great read from him that Earth Spirit would be coming in. Also had the ward to see the rotation, of course, but he was there just when Earth Spirit wanted to go on that. And combined with the Nature's Prophet probably for a Viper kill, he ends up getting that other support. And again, they're coming high, for the high pace from BP straight on to the next move. Observer ward behind, they'll understand LFY if they bring in reinforcements, but this Nature's Prophet's out way too far. No mana for a TP. They won't need much to get this kill. Virtus Pro up again for top lane. Pasha underneath his own T1 tower tries to get back, cannot get there in time. Lil is TPing forward. He's looking towards DDC as the one hero he can probably kill off. But rolling no ball forward, Afu will block it. And without the mana for Lil, he'll have to back away. But then again, the kick is coming in. Viper will start his TP. Now Monet with no time walk. Lil's been able to survive, but that that TP is taking an eternity. Pasha will arrive finally. Did DDC just die to the tower? Pasha just got a kill, man. Yeah, he did. Nice. <laughs> yeah, he did. That was interesting. Maybe, maybe our second observer who can be looking around can find a copy of that and we can explain the mystery of the death. And this is uh, this mid lane is going very well for no one now. Just that bit of help in the beginning is giving Viper a huge edge and. LFY have to try to do something about it. No one's hitting on level 7 to the 5 of Super. He's going to use the Nether Ward now. The rotation is coming in. No one's up way too far underneath that tower. Afu going to look for the kick. Combining it with the Kremper fight. They just drain him out. A Viper Strike maybe with a 1 charge. or a 6 charge. It's enough to live, but he just can't move far enough away. Wrath of Major bouncing through to help out, but it is a 1 for 1 trade off. Earth Spirit still did die. Looked like he might actually survive there with the Howl. And we're going to see. All right, so this oh, he is died to the Creep Wave. <laughs> oh, great. All right. Well, well, that was really underwhelming. <laughs> I think I think Pasha was... Well, uh, no. wrong corner, wrong alley. Okay, well, it's just into Invis, super. He does have to grab a fight, drain once more. This time Lil will get the space. I don't like what happened in mid. They might want to glimpse and try for this kill. I don't think they have enough in the tank. If Ramses was level 6, that's a kill on the Nature's Prophet, but doesn't have the shapeshift just yet. But this, this Howl is important, and I think AA getting 6 is going to be very big for LFY, so that they can counteract this Howl when they go for the place. You see, when you get this amount of uh, influx of health on a hero like Viper, who has a lot of EHP with the resistances, it's not just this 200 health he's getting, it's, it's a lot more when it's Viper. Because of all that resistance, it's, it adds up a lot more for him than other heroes. He still died, but almost got away from that 3-man gank earlier. Well, everything simmers down for the moment. Lil is up on top lane, searching at Monet, who is still trying to get to his level 6. You've got Necroscythe up and running, but because they've had to keep the Ancient Apparition, the Faceless Void, so close, you don't have Chronosphere available for the fight just yet. They're still going to try and find one LFY, smoking up Super and Afu just behind the T1 tower in the mid. They know it's safe because of the dewarding they did previously, and Lil is walking straight into them. The Crepify is up, getting Virus Strike into Roshan. Oh. He attempted it, but that was way too short. It's like he got pushed back out by the cliffside. That's one of those panic moments. You have very little time to react. Get your cursor to the right place. 
just stuns right outside the Roche pit. I think he could have maybe denied himself to Roche, but there's no way he's going to survive that moment at least. LFI but. is putting pressure now for the top lane. Now the ward behind the trees. They sprout up on the Necrophus. Does he have enough life to survive and maybe even get a scythe before death? Not gonna happen. He's down. And here comes your Bar Strike. Faces void. Still no Chronosphere. He's level 5 time dilation. Can at least help control the team fight. While LFY in the trees are coming out the victors. So is that much more to give? They just keep blasting into the trees. Super with a double kill. DDC. Is it really gonna happen again? Dying to the Green Wave. It's not gonna happen. He's got 13 HP escaping out. No more support from Virtus Pro. No one remained farming in the mid, did not have a TP scroll, and Lil's able to survive. This is what the Pugna plus Nature's Prophet can do together. These tower dives and collapsing where you put down the Nether Ward, you TP Prophet in behind and spawn all the trance. It's very difficult for VP to counterplay when they need to TP in heroes. It just takes too long. And Pasha actually died to the Nether Ward. They're trying to cast the Reaper's Scythe. The moment he's dead, I feel like this fight is so almost impossible. He's really trying to stay alive there. Cast the Scythe, dies. Assistance coming in, but BP, they don't have the damage yet in their lineup. Yep. Their support's a really low level, three and four. And Ramsey's that dog. Really not a fight they wanted to take, and the dog unable to control Solo. It's just like, yeah, how, how are we meant to stop this? Oh, he's actually, oh, never mind. He's a little bit surrounded yeah. on bottom. Uh, yeah, he's, he's got trees above, trees below, and trees to the side. Some of these trees are alive. Solo, break it. <laughs> Finally free. Uh, that's funny. All right, he got, he got out. Yes, freedom was granted. Got a lot of practice in the, the escape room. By that. All right. So everything's pretty even across the board. And this one, 1k, the difference in golden experience is really not that much. We're it, 10 minutes into the game, fair trades for coming out of both sides for the team fights. It really isn't considering that no towers have fallen and that VP have this big CS advantage on the Viper. That means that the fights of LFY have just gone way better in the last few minutes. The, the one top, obviously, the big one. Uh, but also the kill they got on the Viper earlier in mid. Yeah, I think a lot of pressure on VP right now to get their level 6s on the supports. The Static Storm is going to be crucial to prevent the spell casting from LFY that is winning them the fights. And they have to play around their Viper. I think Lycan needs time. He's yeah. not a strong hero right now. He can assist his team with that Howl, maybe come in for a late shape shift and maybe run down one support. But he can't man fight this Chrono Sphere. He's just going to die in a Chrono Ice Blast and a little bit of right click. With his current health, he's, he's not tanky enough, I think, to take these fights yet. LFY once more, coming Good to be scan. aggressive. Uh, they are looking. Yeah, that scan is going to make Ramsey's retreat under the tower and probably be just fine here. Question is if they're, they're going to collapse fully on yeah, this tower. They're, they're coming. Lil and Solo, now, there is static, static Storm is available for the Disruptor. He's only just cracked his level 6. LFY may not be ready for this, and Super, that fire strike from Lil has hit the money, but the silence! Afu! He is on the ball! The rocking ball! Well, that fight ain't happening, and they brought no one in for this. They really wanted this. Now they just profit. TPs towards the mid. LFY finding the hole, and the only thing to happen is that SK has to TP in towards mid to try and defend this. But no Sandstorm available. Maybe the fight can be baited in. He sprouted up. Lil looks pretty juicy, but Pasha coming in from the side. Reaper side is available. Here comes your Ice Blast. The side, it will decapitate. The Nature's Prophet for Revenge is there for Super. Viper has made his way over the glimpse, cancelling up the TP. Pugna falling as well. Virtus Pro, the attack onto the Courier. It won't be enough. The Courier will survive. There's a lot on it, in fact. In fact, he even missed uphill to boot. The mid tower has to be denied. Very, very aggressive play there from the Nature's Prophet, out and completely alone. Setting up the Sprout to try to hit the Ice Blast, but that kill was not happening. VP were ready that time. Now we're going to see a replay of this bottom very fast. The moment the smoke breaks, they realize that VP are coming in, and this instant silence from Afu, super clutch. And you know, the panel we're talking about, why, why is Earth Spirit rated so highly? I think, I think it's the player, at least for LFY. To me, Afu is contesting for the best player in the world, in the world on this hero. I think his Earth Spirit over the last couple of months has been simply outstanding. Uh, I think when he played, what was his previous team? Was it Warriors Gaming Unity, I think? Uh, I think he was standout with Earth Spirit as well in his last team. And something is telling me that at least. Um, just, uh, just mechanically gifted on this hero, simply. So if you have a player like that, I think you can just first pick it with a lot of confidence. We saw it earlier today as well by uh, Boboka, picked up for IG. With similar logic. It's the strength coming from these uh, from these forced positions in the Chinese scene. They're just getting stronger and stronger. Their movements are better and better. And uh, well, Virtus Pro, 
They'll have to be mindful of it. Keep your distance away from the very good Earth Spirit. They're trying to force another bait fight, if it's possible. Harsh has been sitting on the top lane, adding pressure to the tier one tower, but LFY are not obliging. They instead move to the bottom lane, bringing him the rest of the support. Super in behind, then he just Prophet Trees at the front, and Virtus Pro is a hard town to defend as it is, and they are going to make no attempt to do it. No one is here. Lycan is still trying to catch up on his farm. He does finish up the level one Necro book. This is one small advantage now that Ramsey's has, and the rest of VP trying to beat down the tier one tower on the top. They are a little bit slower in this early phase of the game at racing for towers. I think it's totally fine for them to trade. It's actually, once the tower starts dropping a little, there's a little four nether talks and the Viper makes very quick work of it. So this, it looks like they're going to give the tower to Pasha in this instance. Uh, he's working toward that. Is that a rod of Atos? There's a rod of Atos. Yeah. He's already finished up the four stuff, so the Atos is next. Great item against Faceless Void. It's going to be very annoying for him to deal with. And yeah, as long as VP can trade like this and get their levels up in the sand king and get his blink dagger and keep the farm going, uh, there is gonna, it does seem like there's going to be this phase when LFY's lineup falls off a little bit in the mid game, and then come very late game, they're going to be strong again when Nature's Prophet and Void are very farmed, especially. But uh, if VP start finding the timings now around 15 to 25 minutes, I think their lineup might have an edge if they get the jump. So that's what they're looking for. They're coming for the fight. Now, the tier 2 tower, the Creek Wave has reached it from Virtus Pro, but there's not a lot of pressure being applied, and everyone else has gone missing off the map. Hence, LFY fell back from the top lane, but the over-aggressive Prophet, Lil will catch him out. They glimpse him back in, already on the wall. They are waiting to see what he does, and there's not much he can do. The side, once again, his head is cleaved from the shoulders. But like all good heroes, you know they're going to come back in the next life once again. It's a big rotation. That's that's my main gripe with this play. It's a good kill to get. It's nice that they get it, but they have five man rotating for one hero in the off lane. They're coming and to fight again. That's again too. something that I feel like LFY are, are, are just better LFY at. LFY, Lil's right got to get heroes. out of here right now. We'll turn for the virus right. The Chronosphere will catch him and Ramsey sees his friend and runs away. Or no, he's running in. Dogform is out. The wolves are behind him. Necrobooks on trigger. He's at least trying to get some kind of revenge on the DDC, but getting hit by the Ice Blast. Not what he wants to have happen. They'll glimpse back the faceless void into the storm of Solo. No way to escape. They get a call for a support. Clean up the Nether Ward, and LFY will retreat for now. This is a really nice synergy between these two heroes that you're going to see a lot of this entire game. Probably Ramsey's going for the level four wolves as well to uh, to complement this. You you have a hero like Lycan who can move really fast and get vision in the fight, and then if the enemy oh, solo away, you get the glimpse. Oh, scouted solo. out. He could have actually made life harder for Afu if we just saw him a second earlier. He wants to get the glimpse off, but now he understands he's dead. He'll glimpse back. The AA, that Afu and AA will team up together to still kill off Solo. Aggressive Ward planted down, and they'll understand is there to block up the camp. They actually planted down two Sentry Wards to find that one OBS. Very close game so far. Actually, three. <laughs> they, put, <laughs> they put down three Sentry Wards around that Tier 1 tower. A 300 gold advantage for what was, uh, or disadvantage for 100 gold back from the ward. Eh. If it's a fresh ward, I think it's worth it. It was fresh. Very fresh. And that's, uh, and that's easily worth it, in my opinion. Map control is very valuable, as, as ever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the, the game is looking really even right now. The progression that I think is very important for Virtus Pro is that the Lycan is getting toward that Necro 3. The Sand King Blink is about 800 away. And then you look over to LFY. Another Atos in this game will be built by the Nature's Prophet. Pretty unusual. Uh, but he wants to get it so that they can control this Lycan through. Uh, they don't have to rely 100% on the Chronosphere or the Earth Spirit Stun, which is very difficult to land on such a fast hero. I'm seeing it being problematic, though. Help. Like, no one's still the biggest hero on the map. Lycan is a problem, but no one with the HAL buff up cracked over the 2k HP. He's now got the full Hurricane Pike coming in as well. And all he's got to do is sit there in the fights, keep pumping out damage, and LFY will have more and more problems. Yeah. Unless DDC could hit him with the Ice Blast. And even then... That is, that is definitely the big thing here for them, is that uh, the Viper is getting so tanky, but it can be a bit deceptive when you're playing against uh, both Decrepify and Ice Vortex. The amplification of spell damage from LFY is, can easily pierce this uh, corrosive skin of no one, so he still needs to build more tank items. He's currently sitting on 2k health, which is a lot, but he's going to need to get beefier than this. It still feels like if he gets Chrono, they will take him from 100 to 0 in that Chrono with their hero combination right now. LFY just ran a four-man conga line underneath the Observer Ward. So Virtus Pro, understand the party is coming to them on top. LFY, in fact, is TPing up the Prophet too. So all five heroes balling up together. The panel touched about it during the draft. Is LFY ready 
to actually come in and have this ball of death against Virtus Pro? Uh, I, I don't think they're in a good enough position here to just flat out say, come at us, but they're going to do it anyway. Yep, Nether Ward in front of the tower. Solo's in the neighborhood. Just watching for the moment. Viper's adding pressure towards the bottom lane. Lil's getting his space in mid. He's 25 gold short of the Blink Dagger. This may be enough where Virtus Pro don't want to fight just because they cannot get him in range. The Nether Ward's going down the walls. The wall is up nicely. Super trapped inside this one with no one arriving for the Viper Strike. Super will fall. And they psych him as well. 65 seconds on the sideline. Everyone else from F LFY is trying to get back out. Lil getting caught on his rotation. Still was able to buy up the Blink Dagger before death, so no money lost on his front. All critical item timing delayed. Support for a core. The core gets scythed. They defend their tower. That's a that's a clear win for VP here, getting that Blink Dagger in the meantime as well. So They almost lost their bottom T1 tower as well. It's on 44 HP. Gonna might be denied. looking at another denial. In fact, yeah, we are. Our free will have to get rid of it. But this game looks a lot better for VP than the last one. A lot better. Well, they, now, we have to the remember, combinations don't seem all in in this game as opposed to last one. We still, we still have to remember that this is a position that I've seen now applying in so many games and they just have a tendency to win team fights later on. So uh, the one concern I have for VP is that this time around, you know, we were saying they had too much team fight last game. I think this time they have a nice balance uh, between team fight and skirmish. And they have heroes that can definitely find the kills. But they need to be very careful that they don't get caught out by these combos that LFY can make. They can make Chrono into Ice Blast. They, we've seen some outstanding Earth Spirit plays earlier today, catching two or three heroes in the stuns. BP's lineup, as tank as it looks right now, is definitely killable for LFY, and we're going to see a big moment come out here, I think. Solo is trying to battle for the ward vision. There's a, an observer up for LFY, watching the front of the pit. That was a fresh ward down. Wolf, the rest of BP want to go into the pit. This wolf scouting is so important. That's why they're putting down the sentry walls, trying to get rid of him, get rid of the other observer from the Radiant side. As Virtus Pro, okay, that wasn't part of the plan. Losing their crew in the way in. Pagna, the dead ward is actually in the best position. It really is dead. Solo just killed himself. The bar strike from Lil. My create space. Ancient Epirus as well as Monet. Out of five for the moment. The Rod of Atos keeping Pasture in position. Monet thinking about the Chronosphere. He's right next to Nature's Prophet, and they do it on the Necrophos with the Ice Blast coming in. Say goodbye to Pasha. Roshan is still alive as LFY. Do they actually want this or not? They're losing their Observer Wood still. These Wolves are getting rid of them. Yeah, the silver lining for VP is that this LFY lineup is straight garbage at killing Rosh right now. So they're not going to get it at least. But they, they defend the Roshan themselves and get two good kills. Excellent flank play. Very nice to see LFY's ability to move in from multiple angles. Even with the Wolves scouting, Solo still got caught off guard by the Pugna coming from the south and just pretty much single-handedly blowing him up with his spell combo. VP are coming back again. They're not yep. done yet. No they, Chrono. They want to fight. Yeah, no Chrono for 82 seconds. Also, low mana. Not a lot to really fight with, so that's why they instead go to the split push. They just Prophet keeps the pressure on the bottom lane. Ice Blast is on his way in once more. Right on top of Roshan. Ramsey's and no one affected by this. Afu might try for a snipe here. Lil needs to have a good angle. They don't know where Afu is. The Wolves are coming out to look. There's Thanks to all the observables, they got deep water. There's nothing for LFY. Here comes Afu, but Lil catches him. He tried a rolling boulder in. No, we'll give him a little extra damage from inside the pit. Aegis Immortal in the hands of Ramsey's already TPing out. Afu will fall as the push. He'll take, he'll take a boom. Man, this is a lot of tower damage being done bottom, though. I still think this was worth it for Virtus Pro. I still think they need to claim this Roshan while they can. Chrono on cooldown is a big deal. It gives Ramsey something to fight with too, but that's if he stays alive. Ice the Ice Blast is coming in. The Crepa fires on him. He'll get hit by everything and then drained out. Rod of Atos, nowhere to run. Is it enough to shatter? He's no. frostbitten, but he will not shatter. Ramsey stays alive. Solo needs vision at the moment. They're looking in the trees, but the runaway is directly down the lane from LFY. So they do force multiple TPs back, but don't get that kill that they really wanted with that Ice Blast. If they could have removed the Aegis there, they kind of reset the state of the game. But currently, Virtus Pro with that extra life advantage might be looking to try to siege a bit here. I still think it's scary for them to siege. They can also use this Aegis to, uh, to just gain some farm and try to get some pickoffs on the map. Having that extra safety for Ramses now with his Diffusal Blade, he gets a lot stronger for Skirmishes, especially killing off that Pugna now will be really easy for him. And it does look like the play call is, it's attack. let's kill something. Yep. Ice Blast is coming in just to push out the wave. It's going to connect onto Lil. 
A little sandstorm on quickly, maybe wondering if he was visible. The Dire Scan will miss that target, but Rampage, Rampage. Yep, have they got enough though? Time Walk just came back off cooldown, Supers nearby. The Glimpse back into the storm. He can't break free, Decrepify is on, so they can't attack straight into Monet. But a side! 70 second window! Damn, that's big, he doesn't have buyback. Look at Ramses, he's already hunting for another kill straight around the back of the tower, moving on to DDC. They don't want to stop now, he gets his vision. He has lost the dog form, however, but DDC trapped in the trees. The Vortex slowing Ramses down so much, his upheaval of a different kind. The Wolves get the vision once more and defuse a blade charge. He's down to five, but supports arrive from no one. A quick ice blast, but DDC ticking, but no boom. On to 25 HP, still alive like it. Stunned up under the tower, he needs to get away, but the Rod of Atos is so controlling him. It was Nature's Prophet in through the Rear. They'll burn the Aegis Immortal. Ancient Apparition is not part of this fight. No one finally breaks free of the trees. The wall is up and they just profit. He came in to break the Aegis, but it'll sacrifice his life to do so. Vernus Pro bringing down the Aegis Prophet. So much aggression coming out from them. Ramsey's actually using three defusal late charges to try to kill that AA. He didn't manage, though, that buff to Ice Vortex in the recent patch that gives himself bonus boost speed as well, actually allowing him to create the distance there to get away. But nevertheless, great fight for VP overall. This should transition into some pressure on the mid tier two tower. I don't know if they feel confident to just brute force this with a couple of cooldowns that they do have, but looks like they're going to try to at least chip away at it. And LFY aren't having They're anything. coming. They're going to go right away. They've got Chronosphere. Leap in. Who does he get? Everybody splits. Delta Wise from Virtus Pro. The stun is on no one. Pasha, can he help out? No, he can't. That's a very dead Viper. And that's not the end of it. Now Monet can try to get in oh, and get Turner. a Chrono here. There's a four stuff. It gets Pasha a little bit further away. Quick run of Atos holding Monet in position. The Wolves keeping the distance, the vision everywhere else, but Prophet, they're able to get the Sprout up. Pasha caught out. Monet, he commits the Chronosphere up. They have more than enough damage to bring down the Necrolite. And that's two heroes without buyback at LFY now, looking to have a little bit of a push of their own. These teams are playing so fast. You feel like you get to set up oh, that Oh, boom! Fast as well, the double stun, but where's the follow-up? The run of Atos is on the like it. He's gonna get a dog form. The wall is up as well as the storm. You've locked the Nathan's Prophet, combining him with the epicenter. They need more damage, they just don't have it. Necroi, it's the push once more. Ice Blast, get out of there, Lil! You're frozen up and drained to death! LFY is neither a great, you do have a little bit of a problem, they just profit to Kripper fight up. It's the Necrobooks that are chasing him down, and they can't do the work even with the Wolves. They can turn their attention towards Monet, so at least there's some level of micro to come from Ramsey to help out. But the mid-tower, it still goes the way of LFY. A TP out from Solo, it's like he's trying to glimpse somebody else back, and he's found somebody. He's found DDC. The wall is up, he'll hold him there for the moment, but friends are too far away. No one has a Hurricane Pike, so Solo, keep the vision up. Now the glimpse, they'll do the run of Atos and send from the Necro. They want revenge. The side is not enough damage, but the Glimpse will pull in DDC. Ending a three kill streak in favor of no one. And more heroes dead on the sideline without a buyback, but still a very costly one. Crucial statics on there from Solo to save Ramses. That would have been a very big kill. They do end up getting Lil at the end here with a nice sprout into kick combo here, an ice blast. I this is something, both of these teams are very, very good at spell casting. Like, they're combining their abilities. It's very clear that the communication is fast and concise about what needs to be done. And uh, LFY are getting a little bit better of a grip here. Solo doesn't look too satisfied with that fight, understandably so. And uh, this guy's a bit happy. Oh. <laughs> they just lost a courier again. It was just moving out in the mid lane, but Nature's Prophet on it. Even with the Observer Ward, there isn't any. He's using the Treants to scout for Vision to find the Courier and then TPing forward to snipe it. Not an easy task. So let's let's try to keep track of items, because I think it's been a while since we've looked at it. There's now the pipe completed on Necropost. There's a BKB on Viper, big item in this game. It's a great item against Pugna in particular. Uh, on the opposite side, we've got the Blink Dagger on Earth Spirit. The Decre or sorry, the, the Aghanim Scepter plus Lens has been completed by Pugna, so reaching that Really strong spike for the hero, and Nature's Prophet now with an Orchid. Really, really good item, especially against Necrofoss and the Disruptor. So, a lot of new play potential is available, and I think it comes down to who finds the favorable smoke. Both teams have burned a lot this game, probably only one remaining for either side. For now, Virtus Pro oh, you just, just go for the, the normal tower. push. They're just taking a tier two. LFY are adding pressure to the bottom lane, hence, they are not here to defend the tower. And Ramsey's can move. In fact, he'll TP down to the bottom lane. That tier three talent at 366 HP, and he needs to defend it. Yeah. 
are the rest of the heroes. Lil, thinking about top as they see the trees move in from the upper part. He'll understand that it isn't just a lane he can easily push. Especially when that Orchid is up, but he may not know it's there. He doesn't know that for sure. But there's no detection on Nature's Prophet, so Inflame won't find his target. Actually, he might have known. He could have seen him on the wave earlier at bottom, I think. So yeah. Will plays it safe, gets out, clears up the trance, and this scan from the Dyer is going to find absolutely... They coming for a gank? A double TP out to the Shrine? Oh, they're just here... For, okay, they're, they're bringing numbers for the Deep Ward mission. But the sentry is too far to the left. They were looking for the Observer Ward on top of the Shrine or the hill, but it was a little bit further to the east. It looks like VP's heroes are connecting as well, so... Looking to find a fight somewhere around LFY's jungle. Oh, I've actually blocked yeah. their own camp. Well, no, they have never it's the, it's the tier 2 tower. It's the tier 2 tower in the bottom lane they're looking at at the moment. VP are pretty blind from the back, though. They don't have good coverage if uh, LFY go for a full wraparound, but I don't think they have the time to even if, set that up. If they're on top of the tier 2 tower, they'll at least see the attack coming in from the left, or they'll see the attack coming in from the shrine. Thanks for the observed ball. It's still got 35 seconds left on it behind. And this LFY is no again. Friend. This is another tier 2 tower where LFY will not defend it. Yeah. And what do they really get in return? Like, they know Virtus Pro are not going to push high crap. They're not going into Chrono. They're not crazy. So they're just happy to let the towers go and wait for the better opportunity. Yeah, I wonder what they, what key item they're looking toward. It seems... It may be a key person. Roshan could potentially spawn in two seconds' time. Yep. So we'll get the counter now, and it will be... One minute. It's one minute. They might be delaying for the BKB on Monet. It's going to help them a lot to uh, have this guaranteed Colonel Sphere. There's no real counterplay from VP, so this BKB, the only piercing spell they have is is the Viper ulti and the Necro ulti, and you don't want to throw those into BKB Lincoln. So he can guarantee his team that setup as long as he has Vision to go in. And Vision is something both teams are doing a very good job at keeping up. Now, even an Invis rune here for Monet could be setting up an interesting fight for them. VP are somewhat scattered right now. And Monet is just going to break it. Whatever, man. I want my BKB. He needs the extra cash. He's got the uh, the Ogre Club as well as the Mithril Hammer sitting in his stash for the moment, but needs the rest of the recipe. VP in the meantime are looking for initiation. Yes, you have the Orchid over on Aegis Prophet. It's not going to control Lil at least. He's picked up a Yule Scepter, so another control ability available for Virtus Pro when they want to jump in, when they want to inflict that damage. Roshan has spawned up. LFY are aware of this as the Trinkets are being attacked by Roshan. Neutral CS now up by one. No one is really far away from his team. He has the Shrine to TP on, but somebody feels like he has to be on defense duty at bottom. This Nature's Prophet is going to try to keep someone busy so that the rest of the team can sit up. And this is seems to be the play call here from LFY. Keep the Fury on down there, get information, and then based on that information, make a move. BKB on Void, still 200 away. The BKB on Pogna has been completed, and... You look over to VP's lineup, what's really their damage through BKB? Viper can hit for a little bit, but doesn't have damage items just yet. They only really have the Lycan. So during these BKBs for both teams, the heroes are going to be very sustainable. It's probably the other reason, too, why Viper's going for the Butterfly. Just trying to increase those raw stats. Lil, oh, he's found somebody in flame, caught out in the bottom lane. Quick Glimpse gonna pull him back in. They still have the silence if it's required. Well, then again, the Rod of Atos holds him there. Lil makes more space again. This time it's with his Yule Scepter. The TP out won't happen. Burris strikes a verbal. In flame will fall. And a critical time for this as Roshan is up. LFY have to be cautious. Full minute on that respawn will allow BP to get good control of the map. He does have buyback, which we obviously don't know. Oh, Monet oh, in. Lincoln Sphere gets triggered. Nope. Oh, Ramsey's misclicked. Oh, actually. here's the glimpse, though. Pulls him all the way back. Solo has the storm available. But Monet triggers at the BKB. Focusing on the struggle while Ramsey's focusing on Arfu on the back lines. They've already killed off Solo. Look for the next target. Ramsey's BKB defuser blade after DDC. Decrepifying is up and they're draining a little bit more life back into him. Monet losing that Lincoln Sphere, but the control damage is on the line. Goodbye. First strike from Lil! Space is created! The Scythe will kill off the faces for what Randy's being drained out! The Wrath of Nature! It'll bounce through and find the kill and a big ice blast on the way in! It healed everybody as well as Lil's epicenter! There's so much damage from both sides! The Virtus Pro barely keeping their head above this water! They want more! They're chasing up in flame! No one's TP forward! They found the Nature's Prophet! Well, Vatos will hold him back, but Lil with the first strike! Lil with the control! for the ground. Three of them do not have buyback. It's only the Earth Spirit. It's only the supports that defend. If VP know this, they can just go mid. 
Well, that was even a dieback from the Nation's Prophet, so effectively kind of a five-kill team fight there. Fortunate bash, but they're playing very well around each other. Great force death from Pasha, great stun save from Lil. And Ramses eventually does get killed by the Wrath of Nature, but damage has already been done. Ramses is he knows how to make that. They're that. going for more. They're inside the base. They push forward. They found the ancient apparition. Ice blast. It can connect for now, but it's still four heroes down for LFY. Considering there's no buybacks, VP are probably cottoning onto the fact they don't actually exist for LFY. Bring down the tier three tower. Do they have enough to pick up a piece of racks as well? They're looking towards the melee. They're going to give it a shot. Super is back to world of living. He'll put down the war to start with. Lil's nearby, and they've already done the job, Virtus Pro. They have taken the full mid lane of Rax, and now will retreat. Any casualties? Void's coming back, but he's got no way to catch up to them. They get out scot-free. And Ramses is already hitting the Shrine. VP getting a lot. They're looking to Roshan now. They've got the Necro books up and running. They've just taken out the Shrine. The fact they all get hit by Wrath of Nature probably flags the fact that Observer Ward was still there. But they killed him thanks to the Vision from the Necro books. But this Roshan, not much LFY can do about it, but they are smoking up. They have to. Rono is there. They're coming out to contest this. A quick scan up from the Radiant. Roshan is only at 50% HP. LFY might make it, but Lil, he'll cut off the smoke. A quick blink away. VP falling out of the pit. They'll smoke themselves. They want the movement speed to get back out of this if possible. And don't fall into the trap of LFY. They don't know the status just yet. The glimpse, maybe. They find Nature's Prophet. He jumped onto the back lines. While you've got Ramsey's BKB up at the perfect wall. Onto Mone and Super. They had to burn their BKB. He'll get a double chrono back. Solo as well as Ramsey's. They're caught inside of it. Now no one with his BKB trying to beat down Super was giving life back over to Monet. He's not going to time walk forward. He's got friends who need help. Super drain the life out of Pasha. Has he got enough? Pasha now. It's a life drain on drain. No one gets the kill. And Pasha turns for the fight. No matter for a sight. But it's no one who is just an absolute beast. Killing off DDC. Monet is on the wrong side of the tracks. Our food's also retreating. But remember what we came for. Roshan was the objective. VP are going back for objective based gaming. They have more than enough in the tank here as well. Viper looks like he wasn't even touched the whole fight. Full HP on him. Pasha has a little bit of mana to give here to heal up Ramses, and this will be another big advantage. Akwith is thinking about it. He will not be able to do this. <laughs> it would be great. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, Abu, what are you doing? <laughs> All right, he actually got out of that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. He managed to roll just far enough to get up the cliff side and get away. But this opening is so important. This disruptor pick from VP has done a lot of work in this game. Whenever LFY try to go for these flank plays where they gather information from one side and then pincer from the other, this disruptor killing off that Nature's Prophet in the beginning of the fight is really what sets the tone for it. It became a really close fight in the end, but that little bit lacking for LFY, VP take another commanding fight. 12,000 gold lead, Aegis and Cheese. The Aegis sitting on the Viper. They gave the Cheese to Lycan, who oh, survived by the skin of his teeth. We're climbing oh, Everest right now. Either that or Virtus Pro are building it. Now move towards the top lane and attack the tier two tower. Sustain got even better with Greaves arriving for Pasha after the fight. They're gonna go harder at this. Dyer's top tower. Looks like they will be aiming to just end the game right here. 15 seconds for Necronomicon. They could wait for that if they want to, but they wait for that. There's keep the pressure up so Furion doesn't get to reach their base. And here we go, Viper. Seven, Who's seven gonna seconds. kill Viper? You got Ice Blast up in a second. Now LFY will have their combination. All right, 100 damage. Good, good. They and just, it's healed. <laughs> that Rod of Atos is continuously used to trigger the Lincoln Sphere of Faceless Void, making him paranoid to use the BKB Viper. He's gonna Hurricane Pike himself out the Sprout. Just a wall for vision and zoning. And they're doing it just from the low ground. That's all this is. A new wall planted in, but very quickly de it out. VP needs to look more bottom now. Oh, yeah. Nature's Prophet. That's a decent wave. Oh, actually, he TP'd in. Lil's going to be here. He'll bar a strike forward. Just try and take care of the creep wave for now. Four staffs in. Going to get the Yule Scepter. Necrolyze TPing over towards the shrine, but Lil, you're in too deep. You don't have a Yule Scepter. You're hooking it up and will probably die. He at least can make his problem here a little bit longer. No way. Really? He'll hide inside the sandstorm on the bottom while the rest of LFY, they're chasing after Viper. No one is a huge killer. They can get it. A 12-2-6 Viper, but... He's actually got the movement speed, oh, and he's got solo. the friends. They've got Solo. Wall goes up, the kick able to get the stun out, and really, VP, understand this is a fight not worth taking. It seems at this point that this is the only way LFY can win a fight, is to force one of VP's heroes to go defend bottom, and the moment that happens, they instantly just run at the rest of the team, trying to set up this 5-on-4. 
Now, Nature's Prophet didn't see Sand King TPing in originally because he didn't get the fast Orchid off into the kill attempt, but he still, he still kept VP on their feet, forced the rotation, and at least buys enough time to defend that tower. Aegis and Cheese are still available, however, and VP could try again. Now with a full heart on the Viper, no one has 4,000 health. <laughs> 20 armor. But it's, it's almost 4.3k when the Howl is up. Yep. The, nec the Necro books, they're the ones that are getting the Howl buff. They're looking for the kill onto the bottom shrine. Very difficult for LFY to contest this just because all they end up killing is Necro books. If they even are able to do that, the Necros come back in. And now Fu's staring him down. He's going to kick him, buy some space for Monet, but the timeout? No, Monet will actually mop up both of them in time. And this is, oh, this could be a big item coming out here. Slowly but surely, Afu has finished off the Aghanim Scepter on Earth Spirit. So now they can try to kill this 5,000 HP Viper under the Tier 4 instead. That might work. That would be an option. Worth a try. I don't think yes. there's anything else I can do here. They're, they're yeah. not in a position to push bottom. This time, Nature's Prophet is not close enough, so he has to come back to fight. He'd be, they're trying uh, to rack in any it. damage they can. So Viper says hello. Quick Hurricane Pike count. 4.3k to get through, Barra Strike, Rod of Atos onto the partner. Now Monet comes in, Lincoln Sphere is his trick and not gonna commit the BKB just yet, but Super's dying too quickly. No one knows he needs one more attack, but Super's got the range. Retreat back out. They're trying to reset the position here, Virtus Pro, and not fall into Monet's Chronosphere. They cannot let that happen. And also, LFY don't want to commit onto an Aegis the Immortal Viper. It's too much to go on. So yeah, you can cold feed him up, but he'll stand his ground. Continue to chip away. Monet finally coming in, finding some time locks. He's rooted to the ground. Like the center. Lost. Viper is dropping low, and here's the Epi with the wall on coming for the Ice Blast! With the face of Boy Kroger! Virtus Pro! Shattered the mirror! That's a lot of bad luck for them! But will it continue? No one's back to the world of the living. Monet once more. They can run a base off over on no one. Afu standing his ground. He's got help. Disruptor. Glimpsing back Monet, but Prophet inflating the perfect TP forward and the sprout. Holding life in a position. He quality blade cuts his way through. But slow down by the cripple fight. The rolling boulder. They're looking for more. They don't just want Randy's. They'll probably still take him. The roar can't give enough life. No one battling against Afu. The rolling boulder gets him back down the hillside. And he has to run. It is a huge Tanky no one, but right now it is a one on five scenario. Lil will come back, try and create some space with the fire strike. No one's BKB won't protect him, but at least he get the fire strike onto the Earth Spirit. Now they go for more. They're draining out Lil. He permitted for pretty heavily for this one. The Viper needs to be able to fight. No one continues to run. Even Couriers are popping in the middle of all this. The crap of my ice blast. No more regeneration. Super suck the Viper dry. That's a lot of toxic things that actually consume. They just prop and die, but there goes the eight kill. Killstreak, they give the life back to Nature's Prophet so he'll survive. The bottom lane is being pressured. LFY have an opening, but their tier 4 towers were under siege. Nature's Prophet had to go back to defend that, so they won't take the tier 3 at least. The bane of so many Virtus Pro games is this high grounding. They got the mid easily, but this top fight went horribly wrong for them. Just this patience from LFY, they're not committing key cooldowns. Slowly but steadily, this BKB is perfect from Monet. If he doesn't get that off and get stunned there, this is a different story. Instead, effectively baited in the whole BP team. Three kills in that chrono. Ramses is in the middle of nowhere trying to kill supports in the back. And the fight is already done here. And they can't get out of there. There's no escape strategy for BP. And VP really do understand just how much they gave away in that fight. Yes, they open up the top racks for attack, but LFY are dragging their way back into this game. It was 13k gold advantage in favor of Virtus Pro. This is now pulled down to 3,000. The experience dips even faster. There's your it's Mount Everest, Toby. You wanted right it. Now. You wanted Mount Everest. Now it's truly a mount. It also has the other side of it coming <laughs> yep. down again. The fall, the part of the climb you don't really want to think about. These last 10 minutes have actually been crazy. Like VP, first of all, building that big advantage over the span of three minutes, and LFY taking it back after VP had all of those advantages now. Yep. It feels like a completely even game again, even though LFY are lane down and have a tier three gone in the top lane. They have so much momentum going their way and so many big items on the way because of all these kills they got. This is worrying and Samil was saying, you know, is this a matter of can, can VP, if VP get late enough, do they just win late game? And he was like, the, I think this LFY lineup is pretty good late game. I'm, I'm with it, man. This, this it void does. is getting really big. And Pugna, don't underestimate Pugna core when it's this farm. Super is dealing sick damage every fight with life drain. And the Nature's Prophet, of course, starting to rack up damage. 4,500 gold in the bank. What's he going to buy next? Could finish a Bloodthorn. 
could finish. Maybe, I don't know if there's any point in getting a Silver Edge here. Maybe get a Hex. The only concern I currently have He's is, getting away, though, <laughs> is the fact that Pushing, the Viper, maybe? pushing up the hill, pushing up the hill is, is the bigger problem for me. Like, every fight that's been happening so far is happening in LFY space. VP coming towards them, giving the choke points for the Chronospheres to work. What happens when Virtus Pro are the ones on the defense? When they could potentially buy back a hero and bring him back into the fight? What happens if you hit a Scythe? Obviously, LFY's dream scenario, get a fight with VP outside the base. Roshan, a big place to actually do that. We're gonna have his spawn time up in actually now. It's instant spawn time for Roshan. Wow. This All game right. just wants us to keep fighting. But if they get the fight LFY, they can push into the VP base. Without it, I can foresee a couple of problems coming their way with Here the comes VP the smoke. defense. Furion does have a Silver Edge now, so he can break the Viper. They need to kill him. Out. They need to kill him straight away. Blink, Virus right there. She used the Yule Scepter to break it. Now Monet gets the BKB off the side. Holds him in position. Where's that Chronosphere? It connects onto Lycan. The Ice Blast is coming forward as well. But Monet dying very quickly. Lycan will die before the cause. After a rolling ball down, he's found Lil further down inside the river. The Magnetize. Lil will end up ticking out two heroes without buyback. No one wants to stand his ground, but currently he's on the low part. In the river, the wet feet, if only he had feet. Pacha push back up the hill. They block him in with the ice feet. No one being drained out. Pacha's trying to help him out. A run of Atos to keep Super in position. No one's retreating, but on bottom lane, it is where Inflame has caused the damage. Picking up the mat, the melee racks. Still mid. They're going to turn around and fight Pasha once more. Super. The Nether Ward is down. They're trying to get rid of that. He drained the life back out of Pasha. And now they turn for the fight. The ice blast is really good from DDC. But will it be enough? Super. The Immortal. No way he gets out of this, man. There's no way. To the trees. Yeah, his BT's available. The Crabify and TP went to start oh with control. God. You have nothing! <laughs> Super is away. The bottom rack is taken. And LFY. Not only have they now gained the advantage in Golden Experience, but they've leveled up the rack's advantage. The mid for the bottom lane. It's just these clutch moments. This smoke from VP breaking and not getting that kill on Void because of the four staff. Yeah, this is the end of the fight. This fight was like a minute long. Super rooted up. He does get a decrepify off again, and VP are running away. Cold feet on Pasha, and no one's like, I'm gonna kill this AA. Uh, oh, wait, Pugna was still alive, and decrep TP. No scythe available. 15 second cooldown, and he actually does get out of that play. What's written on the back of their shirts? LGD are invincible. It's seeming rather appropriate at the moment. LFY. Keep pushing forward. The superstars of the group stage. They are one win away from getting in to that winner's bracket final and facing up against Newbie. But El Virtus Pro, they are not out of this yet. They Absolutely are fighting, not. they are crawling their way forward. They just are looking for an opportunity and they're heading towards the top for exactly that. They need to get a better jump. They need to get a jump that actually matters. That time they threw away cooldowns into a void that already BKB'd and then, you know, that fight is, is not gonna favor you. They just profit so close, but they don't see him. The Radiant Scan was just a little bit further up the lane from where he was, so they didn't commit to the attack. Damn yeah, it, Flame is progressing so much. He finished that Silver Edge, now he's 5,500 gold again. So, has the Silver Edge to break off Vi Viper's passive, and now he's gonna probably build a damage item to go with it. That means if they catch this Viper Here in the chrono, they could We've been in this situation before, Monet! The double chrono! I blasted on the money! No one hit by that! The drain down Ramses! No one will BKB and try and stand his ground! He's got the help from Pasha as well as Lil, but they don't want to fight this. They're down a man, they're down a Hal, and Pasha, here comes the jump. Lil will bring in a perfect pyro strike. He had to do it too early. The Epicenter has no effect. Maybe the Soul is there from Solo with the Soul down. They brought down at least the Earth Spirit, but buyback is there from Inflame. He's under the back lines. The drain is too heavy under the Viper. Solo still trying to play around this. They don't see him. They're going to break him with the Silver Edge. No one's in trouble. No one is down on the sidelines. You'll lose a Necro too. Viper has buyback available. However, he might be able to help defend, but the Kree Wave pushing in through the bottom. Solo doesn't have his Storm, doesn't have his Aghanim Scepter, and has LFY knocking on the front door, ready to destroy the home of Virtus Pro. Look at this Nether Blast damage, by the way. Oh, not again, no one pushes back to the safety of the tier 4 towers. Monet beating in to that Rax. It's hurting so hard. One pop and that melee Rax just dies. You're talking about the Nether Blast damage. That mid Rax is already gone. LFY looking towards the top. Necro has buyback available. Lycan is back up in two seconds time. And LFY, they need to retreat. They've already claimed so much. Lycan, Ramsey, he's TPing in behind the line. Shapeshifters up as well as BKB. 
LF5 want to get out. DDC's well, the that's a big kill. He got the if he gets him. Profit. He's trying to TP out in time, but there's no stun from Ramsey's. He doesn't have a basher. He was looking for the assault Kuras. Super. The glimpse will stop his TP. That's a big one. That's a huge one. And Ramsey's will pass, swipe him down. 6-4, six, 6 gold. Comes to the 6-6-6 six, 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 Ramsey's. And they look towards Roshan. Faceless Void. Still in the neighborhood. Chronosphere comes off corner in two seconds' time. LFY can contest this point. Yeah, they do have buyback on the Pognet. Boots of Travel are on cooldown, however, and the Nature's Prophet just TP top. Actually, he has no TP cooldown. <laughs> so, you know, all right, he can easily connect. How ballsy do you oh, want to be? Oh, the Iron Blast class. will hit on all four heroes, revealing the fact that Roshan is being done. Monet turning his attention. The Necro books are coming out. He'll have to beat the crap out of him to start with. Roshan down to 5k. VP, they need this. They need the Aegis as well as the Cheese if they can have any chance against LFY being two racks down against them. And it looks like for the moment, rolling boulder, Afu, he jumps in! Where's the Aegis? He's that just a Afu! You thief in the night! Afu wants to keep running! The scythe will put him down, but it only takes the Aegis the Immortal! VP, TP home! They needed that Aegis! They needed that for the fight and have lost it! I can't believe some of the things happening in this game. This is like Arthur's unbelievable not play. He's going in further! Stone the bird! The Viper is throwing backwards! Monet looking for the time lock! Jump up! Almost worth me in the chronosphere! First right from Lil! Trying to create space! They're standing over on the face of Void! Using him up as well! Do they want to keep fighting here, LFY? For the moment, Afu does time and time again! He wants to aggressively rolling bowling forward! The Virtus Pro, they're coming back home! Back to the safety of their mother's arms! BP. Here All we go. they got for this. All they got for this hard work was a cheese. Oh, that kick! And Afu even prepared. Afu was confident. He prepared two slots in his inventory. He wanted <laughs> both of them. He got one, and then he got out. If he had got the cheese there, that would have been a side kill, and they would have had an agent to work with. But he gets exactly what he needs there. Incredible play from him. And now we have Like, and he has the cheese. So at least Ramsey's coming into the next fight. If he can find a little bit more gold, will buy out to pick up the Assault Curas. They're short of buybacks very heavily on Virtus Pro. On cooldown for both the Necro and the Viper, and short of the money for the Disruptor as well as the Lycan. But Disruptor, look at Solo buy out for this. You're not going to have four stuff. You're going to have anything like this. He went for the Agnum Scepter, Tranquil Boots, as well as Windlace. Solo understands the next team fight is what's going to make or break this game. Mainly break the back of Virtus Pro and send them into the lower bracket if LFY can win it. He has to try to get a Static Storm in the Void before he gets Chrono off. If he can Static Storm and field him before he gets four staff away that could be the start of a very big fight for them but it's very very difficult the well monet has been so aggressive he's been so aggressive he may just jump into it not realizing what he's up against hit that bkb button have no response there was a moment uh earlier when bp tried to do the exact same thing before the bkb and there was an instant four staff from ddc so if lfy keep their position incorrect they can definitely save him but i, I think it's the play you've got to go for you have to try to catch the void to prevent that chronos here Ramses is losing his necro books. He's only just trigger thieves. He needs to keep him alive 60 seconds without those. He'll need them for the fight. It's LFY posturing. You do have that quick TP back from Nature's Prophet, but he's got no cooldown on TP, so farming the jungle while waiting for the push in flame. Efficiency galore from the Hala Hala Prophet. That's the issue here for VP, is that they're camping inside their base and they can't really get out. They're, there's really good aggressive wards from LFY. The Spherion with zero TP cooldown can just keep pushing out the waves and farm as much as he wants. He looks like he wants to join his team top. The Siege begins. This Nether Blast deals bajillion damage at a bajillion range. And that ain't no, that's no assault. That's no, like, we're not blowing this out of proportion. Have a Here look at this. Super. Hit. Look at that, man. What's that? 300 damage? 300 damage to the melee racks. Prophet's TPing in towards the bottom lane. He's allowed the Wrath of Nature to keep the pressure up. He broke Super's Lincolns, but no follow-up. Oh, it's so hard to commit. <laughs> He's just TPing to all the bounty rooms. <laughs> oh, another one. Bounty for me. Oh, oh here comes the fight. The push down, the push neck right with my... Oh, no. That's it. The turn is locked in too many. Four heroes and sweet, sweet of sugar. That is pro work on LFY. Will advance to the winner's bracket final. Dream undefeated in the upper bracket, pushing VP down to lower bracket round four. But what play, what style, what grace, what refinement!
This looks like a championship team to me, to Toby, right now. I've, I've seen quite a few of their games now in this tournament. It's like a team that can, first of all, come back from this deficit, a team that can consistently just win games. Like, that's, at the end of the day, what it comes down to is, can you win the games? And you put them in really hard situations. They have to combine and use their spells perfectly or find these small opportunities. They find them. They do it every time. It's, it's a scary team, man. You, you gotta, you gotta give props to VP. This was a really good game for them. They built a big advantage. They were in a great position to win it, but they were missing that X factor that this LFY team just seems to have. When, when push comes to shove, this team delivers, and they're my favorites right now. Tomorrow's, or is it tomorrow or the day after? It's the day after. I think they're playing newbie. Whenever it is, that's going to be one hell of a game. But LFY right now look so good. Yeah, so good. They are looking sexy as hell. Of course, first pros to put up one hell of a fight. Yeah, they're no mugs with the heroes, but maybe that just goes to show just how far LFY is above everyone. You ask like, who do you want to face up in the final? Everyone will say, please don't give me LFY. Don't let LFY drop into the lower bracket. It's already hard enough down there as it is. If Virtus Pro actually achieved that today, Liquid Empire, OG, everyone will be scared to death of that lower bracket. They're already scared enough. We're going to go gray at this point of this tournament, but LFY, superb play, stylish players. I definitely deserve a grand final slot. Yeah, well, they need to get through the winner's bracket final first. Yep. That's uh, one step at a time, even for them. But I still think when you look at this game and how it worked out, this was one of the hardest games LFY had that they won. So I think VP are still, loose, is still showing good form, even though they lost this game. And they can take that with them into that lower bracket when they meet their next opponent. Well, good luck for VP, but LFY are your victors of the winner's bracket. Semi-final advancing through to the winner's bracket final. More Dota from them in the future, but it is beautiful and I cannot wait. There was doubt surrounding them in the group stage. There was doubt surrounding them into the main stage. And now, perhaps some of that doubt is starting to fade because LFY pass their biggest test yet of TI. Virtus Pro thrust into the lower bracket, and they will be having a domestic duel in that upper bracket. It'll be newbie to take on LFY to see if they can do what the others couldn't. I am joined by the ever lovely Sumail, who still hasn't given me that t shirt. I am going to get it eventually. I think I'd have to get it in a slightly bigger size. Uh, Blitz as well, and of course, I've got the lovely FNG on the end there. I think I'll start with you, actually, dude. On the end, Virtus Pro thrown to the lowers. But I, I imagine it's just going to be credit towards LFY as opposed to criticism towards VP. Uh, I mean, to be honest, VP didn't play the base the game because I don't like their draft, to be honest, because okay. they have three cores, uh, two of them really slow, Necrophos and Viper, they can't do much on the map, and yeah. they don't have any teamfight potential. As we see, Void and uh, Parat just do a lot in teamfights, and basically VP doesn't have any saves from that. And that's the problem. They went into late game, and as Samuel said, uh, LFI late game is not bad, and they just won a game. They won the game indeed, and we want to make sure we can capture all of the smiles as we have a winner standing by with Casey. Let's check in with them now. DDC, bro. <laughs> that was amazing. I was all set to start asking you about the big fight that started happening in the 41st minute. I thought, oh, this is the turning point. This is great. Then Afu steals the Aegis. Can you walk us through what happened in the last 10 minutes of our lives here? <笑>兄弟这一场很棒很精彩 uh, at the time, we uh, Pugna was dead and uh, still reviving, so things, you know, weren't looking too good for us. And then uh, Afu said, "Hey guys, like, you know, you mind if I try to steal the ages?" So we all agreed to it. And then uh, he went for it. And then, you know, what follows is the excitement that you saw. Follow-up question: Was it really that polite? Like, hey fellas, mind if I steal the ages? Uh, <laughs> 一去不回的感觉就是就做 <laughs> Uh, when he asked the time, I was feeling of uh, he was going to go and not come back. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going in. <laughs> you have been at every TI. You're captaining this team. How has your experience over the last few years being here on this main stage, how has that contributed to your leadership of this team and doing so well? I mean, you guys have been dominant ever since group stage. 
，呃，就是你当然是每一届 TI 都来当过选手，那么这么多年积累下的经验啊、呃，对你这次就担任那个 BP 手和队长的角色有些什么样的启发？呃，主要是。这个队的话，主要是我们五个人都一起讨论战术啊，然后打法、啊，然后劣势了我们都不太急急，所以我觉得前，我觉得我这个队就是真的很厉害，希望可以，所以拿到很好的成绩吧。Uh, I think the key to this team is that、uh, we'll all discuss everything together, and、uh, you know, no matter. What the game situation is, we'll keep our calm, keep our cool, and、uh, I just hope, I hope that we can, you know, get get really good results, end up with a great finish. Newbie is next. I know that you're used to playing playing them quite a bit. So, how do you think the two teams match up against each other? 那当然，你们下一轮对手是牛逼。那么可能就在国内训练或者在国内，呃，就是你们一直交锋和较量的时间，就是机会比较多一点。那么平常一下，你们打牛逼。应该是谁状态好，谁会赢吧，因为大家都很熟悉。就就这样。啊、uh, ，We're very familiar with each other, so I just think whoever is in better form or condition or fighting shape at the time should be able to take it. Well, congratulations! Can I please give you a high five? That was amazing. I've never heard people lose their minds like that in quite some time. So congratulations, very well earned, and we wish you the best of luck. Back to you guys. I love it, Casey. Getting to hear a little bit of insight as to what's going on when you're planning on stealing the Aegis on the main stage at the international when you're one game away from the upper bracket final. That's the kind of play I can imagine. You know, you're you're, you're going to go for as well, Samuel. Yeah, I would go for that. A cheeky. Yeah, a bit cheeky. I like that he the communication was just.、Uh, Do you mind if I go for it? Is that the kind of thing that's going down in your kind of comms? I, I, I don't think I would say that. I would just go in and、yeah. don't care. I'm going in and I may not come back.、Um, I mean, that is pretty funny. I think. Yeah, it's just fantastic. And that's the, the brilliance of Jack to help provide us some of that insight. But we do want to break this down a little bit. And you kind of started a thread you didn't get to finish. You were suggesting that you weren't necessarily satisfied with what Virtus Pro brought into the game again. Yeah, I mean, the other, so the other thing that I want to mention that、mm. LFI seems to pretty confident about the game, but Virtus Pro they seem kind of nervous or something because I don't feel that that was the Virtus Pro game. You know, they just try to outplay LFI and play in LFI game, but not in their game.、Okay. That's the problem. Not playing their own style. I always find this really hard. It seems like such a、uh, something that we can't quantify or explain. But perhaps this could be an opportunity to kind of see what you can do with this blitz. You, you are a master of explanations. Styles. We're talking about Virtus Pro's style. We talk about LFY's style. What's going on in terms of NotVP not playing as they as they should? I feel like LFY is just kind of a smothering team. They put the clock on you even when there shouldn't be. You feel like you have to make this high ground move up at top. We thought that、uh, VP could also go late game, but LFY kind of put the clock on them. They force this really awkward engagement where they have the Aegis and they feel like they have to go for the high ground up at the tier three top.、Mm. Meanwhile, while that's happening,、uh, the Nature's Prophet had pushed in bottom. So by the next time that the fight had taken place, he had just taken racks by himself. And this team is just so patient. They wait for their openings. They make crazy flashy plays. They feel like they're playing with absolutely no fear at all. Just so much confidence. How many times do you make a play like that at Roche where he's just like, guys, I'm going in. Doesn't matter. Let's see what happens. That's so awesome for me to watch. Awesome to watch. What was, what was it like for you, Samuel? What do you make of this game as a package deal? LFY are now four and zero across TI versus Versus Pro. I think the LFY draft was very well rounded. I didn't really like the、uh, Pugna pick, but I guess it worked out for them. Sure.、Uh, the way VP messed up was in like they need Pasha to play some hero who's like initiator, like jump and big team、sure. fight, and he was just playing Necrolite. I, I don't think he's like confident at all in that hero. That's the way I felt. And no one was playing Viper. I, I guess it's like his type of hero, but but he doesn't scale that well, and he doesn't put the pressure that much, like other than laning phase. So I think they are just like not really figuring themselves out, like what、right. should be good for them, and like just struggling to find their way. So I think the question is, you know, trying to find identity. You made it clear that that's kind of something you were struggling with. VP perhaps the same, having a bit of an identity crisis here in Seattle. What were you saying, Blitz? Oh, it was just that、uh, that was the point that you brought up, right? In、yep. your games against Secret, it felt like in the first game you didn't really pick what you wanted to, and then later on as you went, you said we should just play what we're going to play. But yeah, and that's something that Sumail brought up as well. They're not picking comfort heroes for their players. These are heroes that they're not necessarily. Uh, known to do well with, they're picking a void mid. They're doing something like the necrolite offlane.、Sure. They're not picking to their strengths, and I feel like that's where it's failing them right now. They're losing sense of their identity. 
I mean, maybe Necrophos of Lane was kind of a good idea, but you need to pick uh, mid lane and bot lane super good heroes because, you know, you kind of baited Necrophos and stuff. But Viper and Lycan, they can't win against Pangna and Void. We just go full late game, he plays his Corona, and you can escape that. You just die, and that's it. The confidence is just overwhelming from LFY. Um, now, in terms of teams that can take them on. I mean, the, the list is getting infinitely shorter now. They're going to be playing against Newbie. I think we just have to kind of start reflecting now about what we've learned from Virtus Pro. Not only have they lost a bit of identity, but also, you know, where, where what are we seeing that coming in towards that lower bracket? There's some big names in there. I mean, the likes of Empire are still fighting strong. The likes of Liquid are there. OG. I mean, Virtus Pro have still got some heavy tasks ahead of them somehow. Who, who do you think is the biggest one? Who's the biggest name for them to fear in that lower bracket? I think Liquid might be the bigger one, but I, I don't really know. They're like, OG is super strong. Like, they have won two majors and like they finally won their first PO3 in TI. Oh, that's true, yeah. History. By Nutil, so we, they might just go on a spree now, you know? Yeah. Can so happen. I know it's kind of a bit, not necessarily bad taste, but I'm interested. Now that you don't necessarily get to lift the Aegis, who do you believe will? I, I want SEC to do it, yeah. but I don't want Faith to be the first time, uh, two first two time TI winner. Oh, so you're so trapped in that. a box? Uh, yeah, I am. So I think I'll just root for my boys Liquid. Yeah, go for Liquid, just yeah. so that that record can be someone else's. All right, let's um, kind of same kind of question towards you, but more so just kind of eyes towards tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be seeing, of course, all of those games. We're going to be seeing more from uh, the likes of Liquid and Empire. We're going to be seeing OG versus LGD. I mean, who are your eyes drawn to in that lower bracket? I think Liquid versus Empire is going to be such a big match for me to watch because uh, we always debate who's this team that's going to just be this train that can't be really stopped. At Boston Major, it was Adfinum, this team that nobody saw coming that just ran through the bracket. Yeah. Uh, at previous TIs, we had CDC. We had uh, last year, we had the DC squad, obviously. It's just this team that doesn't have any fear. They don't really play like they have something to lose. They're just playing for fun. And Empire could really easily upset that Liquid squad if they're not careful. I think before we get too sidetracked into tomorrow, I think fun is the word I'm going to pull out of that sentence because one last time today, it is time to look at some of those fantastic community films.